Hello, my name is Jonathan Atherton, and we are going to speak with my social studies buddies, my grandfather, Jim Atherton. Hello, I'm James Estel Atherton, Sr., the father of Jonathan's father. So, grandfather, at school we've been learning about Native Americans. What was your passion about these Native Americans? We know you know a lot about them. Well, Jonathan, when I was in the first grade at Maxwell School in Lexington, Kentucky, our teacher took us into the library. A local postman had displayed his arrowhead collection in there, and it was love at first sight. So I started at the age of about 10 going to archaeology meetings at the University of Kentucky. And then I started hunting for Indian relics on my grandparents' farm on plowed ground. And that got me started. Um, so I chose for my project to be about the mound builders. And we've been talking about the Dina in the mound builders and the relics and the weapons. Um, so can you tell us about them? Well, the mound builders in Kentucky, especially, are called the Adena people, A-D-E-N-A, -E and they are from the time period of Archaic. There is uh, several periods of time, Paleo being the oldest, then Archaic, then Woodland, Mississippi. But we'll talk about the Archaic and the Adena people, which ran from about 3,000 to about 1,200 BP, BP, which is before present. Now behind us, I'll point out a frame of the Adena spear points, which are characterized by a rounded or squared base and rounded shoulders. And when you see those, that is primarily from the Adena people. But I have a frame of the Adena spear points, almost all from central Kentucky, a frame of scrapers that they would have used to scrape and work their hides with in some woodwork, and then maybe we'll put in a frame of knife blades that they would have also. So if you would, we'll turn and show those. Spear points of the Adena man. They're indicative of the round, the round base and the rounded shoulders. That's the typical Adena point. This frame is filled with the stone axes of the Adena man, often referred to as celts. They would be inserted in a hole in a club and they were used for uh, trimming wood and sometimes in fighting, but uh, most of them are actually tools instead of weapons. The next frame to the right is even a little bit more refined, and these are celts, but they're called adzes because a blade has an upturn of about 35 degrees rather than being a straight on blade, but they're called adzes. Again, stone tools of the Adena people. So Grandpa, for the Deanna, how did they hunt their big game? Did they use um, spears or a a bow and arrows? Well, Jonathan, they were kind of in between those two. They uh, were before the bow and arrow. They did not have a bow and arrow. They used spears, but they were used a tool called an atlatl. And the atlatl was simply a handle that mounted and would hook into the base of a spear. Consider this being a spear. Forget about it being a... And actually, a lot of their spears kind of looked like this. They were long and hafted. But they had a handle that come down here and it would hook into the base of the spear and they would hold it down here like this. And when they would use it to throw, it would give it a lot more force than just throwing a spear by hand. Then they developed a little weight called an atlatl weight, and it went on the handle. So when they threw it, they had this weight with their wood, they knew how to position it, and it gave much more f force and distance than just ordinarily throwing the arrow. And so what is an atlatl made of? The atlatl was basically a wooden handle, sometimes used an antler thing to hold in to the notch right here. That's what it was made out of. But their spears 
were made out of wood. And they had a lot of trouble getting their spear just right and tapered. They did not want to lose that, that little spear because they were hard to make. A lot harder than the stone tools. They could make them in a matter of minutes if they had the tools and the material in their hands. But to get a good straight shaft, that was a little difficult for them. So they prized that more than anything. So they, we live in Madison County and there were mounds in Madison County. Can you tell us some information about them? Yes, generally speaking, most mounds were burial mounds. That's what they were built for. Initially, the first person would be buried at ground level with maybe their goods with them, maybe even a little uh, hut over top of them, and that would be burned. And then they would build a mound up from there. And then later on, people of importance within that culture or that group would be interred into the mound in various places. It was not a place that they lived. It was a place that they revered and held uh, precious to them. Uh, I have a book that I obtained when I was... This book was published in 1932, and I acquired it in the 50s. And my dad and I used it as a guide to locate sites with. But at the time this book was written, they mentioned that there was literally hundreds of mounds in Madison County. But most of them were wiped out due to cultivation. Plowing over and plowing them down, they were low mounds. The book itself cites 35 different specific mounds. And we have included a map of Madison County and those predominant Sites are marked on that and identified in the book. So we are looking at some tools and weapons that the Dita used. Can you tell us about these? Yes, let me have the spear point. This is a, a spear point, like the ones in the frame, indicative of your rounded stemmed base and your rounded shoulders. And they made this by using a rock to hammer it out with and maybe a deer antler for its final flakings. When it's first made it's very sharp and that is an actual spear point from the Adena people in that culture. These tools, I was telling you about the celts which are the axes of the Adena. This is a normal celt and it features a full face on both sides, cutting edge, and it would have been hafted in a handle and, uh, and used as an axe. This is a similar one, also called a silt, but it is a adze because it has the about 35 degree upturned blade and it would have been used in this way to cut wood with, to dig out hollows and that type of thing, rather than an axe of chopping. But that's the difference between a normal silt and an adze silt. So some of the stuff you've been talking about we have been learning in class and we've been doing this for a few months and you've been doing this all your life. What would you say to kids about my age to encourage them to keep on learning about this? Well, I've been collecting for now over 60 years and uh, it's been an enjoyable hobby all my life learning about archaeology, anthropology, and learning about the tools and weapons of North America man. And I started off with no arrowheads and started accumulating one or two at a time. So if you'd like them, it's a good hobby to have. Learn about the hobby, learn about the laws about the hobby. If you see plowed ground on private land and you have permission, look on it and see if you can find some arrowheads, spearheads. If you do, that I encourage you to take care of and preserve them because they are actually very fragile in their works of art of prehistoric man. So I encourage you to learn about them. There are people you can reach out to, even in your own county, that are knowledgeable and find out what you have and uh, learn about it. I've enjoyed it all my life and a lot of my friendships have been gained through the mutual hobby of artifact collecting.